coming up on Mobile Learning in the Classroom Language Apps. Hi, my name is Guy Trenin. And I'm Zoe Falls. And this is Mobile Learning in the Classroom from TechEdge. And today we're talking about language apps. Uh, we're talking about it from a learning a foreign language a perspective and learning English. So it has a few pieces that we want to put together. Mm -hmm. So I'm using Duolingo. And Duolingo you can use on a laptop or on a tablet or on a phone. Um, I currently mm -hmm. have it up on my laptop. and. I've gone through and I've just selected Spanish, but there are numerous languages you can mm -hmm. pick from. And what I like about this, I'm gonna go ahead and go into a lesson, is it includes the written text, it includes a picture, and then it also does audio. And so you can mm -hmm. have that fully sort of language yeah. immersive experience in it. And it starts you out really simple Mm -hmm. and it tells you whether or not you're right and okay. you just go through and you set daily goals so i currently have mine at the default which i think is 10 minutes a day of going in and going through mm -hmm. these different lessons and as you progress through the lessons you get closer to where you take a test and you kind of test your mastery mm -hmm. of them they have you do multiple things so you have to translate into english which I did wrong, the man eats. Um, so it mm -hmm. makes sure that you have the tense correct and okay. everything else. So it's not just word recognition, it's full comprehension. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll also, again, you can hear the audio goes yeah. through and it reads it to you so you hear it yeah. while you're going through. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. It's gonna lose my progress, that's fine. It'll also tell you what words you've learned. Mm -hmm. And so, and then it gives you this graph that shows how well you know that word okay. based on the metrics of going through the different activities. But All one right. of the things you can do and that I've seen my students mm -hmm. talk about is they can compete with their friends. So what they've had okay. teachers have told them to do in the past is find people that are in the same language class you mm -hmm. are and connect with them and then you can sort of have that friendly competition as mm -hmm. they go through and try to learn that mastery. And you can have them, when you sign up with Duolingo, you can either do it through Facebook or they can do it through a Gmail account mm -hmm. or they can just create a Duolingo account. But yeah. the nice thing is it's kind of one of those, oh, I can use an account I already have. Yeah. So it makes signing up really easy. And for schools, it makes it nice because schools are trying to limit the number of logins that kids would have. So if they are already using Google, for example, it makes it really easier. Uh, especially at the elementary level, they're not going to use Facebook because there's an age limit. But if they are using, uh, for example, our local school districts uses uh, Google everything, they love it when there's a Google login that you can use. Exactly. And then you're there. And there is a Duolingo for schools. So if you mm -hmm. go to schools.duolingo.com, you can create a classroom. Mm -hmm. and again, you can choose. So this gives you some example of the various languages you can get. Yeah. So I'm going to call this my test class. Mm -hmm. And you create a classroom. And that's a Spanish classroom. It is a Spanish classroom. And this is where you import, you mm -hmm. invite your students, and you can do that through any of the devices. Yeah. Any devices. And so in this way, you can have that classroom control. So with the younger grades and younger students, it's a nice way to encourage them to work on their foreign language mm -hmm. outside of the classroom. And you really know that the lessons they're getting are robust. They're having that visual input. They're hearing it. They have to type it out. Mm -hmm. um, when they're on their phones, there are ones where you, you move the words to create the sentences. So and they can do it on the go. And the activities are really engaging, and I think that's a big part of it, is it's a game-like environment, and you have levels and rewards and all of that in a way that keeps pushing them forward to do a little bit more. And, 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 and I do know from work we've done a few years ago that kids get really hung up on those, sometimes not positively, so sometimes they, they're, like, they're missing half a star, and they can move on to the next lesson, but they're, they want no, that star. I want that half star, because uh, I want it. 
because it looks like it's incomplete. So we do have to mitigate that and, and work with kids about and making progress, but uh, this is a way to have them keep going with languages, even outside of classroom. Or if you're in elementary school and you don't have a lot of time to work on language, because our elementary school, maybe unfortunately, uh, don't have a lot of time with foreign languages or we do it as after school, this is a way to really augment that learning time with a lot of time out of classroom. You can engage parents and all of that. It can be fantastic. And the undergraduates that I know, and they're the ones that mm -hmm. actually told me about this, this app, they like it because it's usually not the same curriculum that's being used in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So they have this secondary source of learning the material and they can stay up on it over break and they don't have to lug around their textbook or worry about flashcards or yeah. other types of things because it's already built in and they can have it on their phone. Yeah. And it transfers with your account transfers between devices, yes. so you're not linked, uh, you're not tied to any one device, and it really does work on everything. It does. Uh, so a Chromebook is just as good as a phone. Obviously, a phone is always easier, a phone or a tablet, because you can take it anywhere. And so we're going on vacation, and that really works for us. But uh, it really is open to whatever device you have, or even access to device. So even a library device or something like that, it can work just as well as long as you can log in. And so if you log off, I want to show mine, which is phrasal verbs from Cambridge. And this one is called the phrasal verbs machine. They also have phrasal stein, which, which is fantastic as well. And as somebody who, uh, who's, who had to learn English as a second language, phrasal verbs are always the more complicated, one of the more complicated things to learn because they are not obvious. There is no system by which you will gain them except by reading them, seeing them. So this is a way to uh, get that information. You can see that you can choose what you want to do. I want an exercise because that challenges me, but you can also do just a review. And what you have is you have short videos that look at exactly what it is. And if I touch it, it'll go again. And then I have to choose the phrasal verb that is connected. And this one was, I think, point out. And you say, OK. And you get a call that is right. And you've got attempts and errors on the bottom. And you, you can watch it again. And I love the visual appeal that this has yeah. because it's, it's a lot different than most of the language apps. Like Duolingo looked very streamlined and mm -hmm. professional and serious in a way that this yeah. looks a lot more fun. It has a steampunk, really game vibe to it. Yes. And the videos are have that kind of old world feel. And it's actually just kind of pretty to look at. So I think yeah. it's going to draw students into it just for that fact alone. It's kind of a really clever mm -hmm. setup. And so if it's wrong, I get, a, <laughs> oh, your answer is wrong. Let's try that again. The answer is set up. OK. And so I can go to the next one. So this is a way to practice. A, and it has a fairly rich number of phrases, which is fantastic, because each one of them has a different animation to go with it. So this is one. The second one, as I said, uh, is uh, and I've got it open. It's Frasenstein, and it's the same kind of uh, approach. I've got uh, the view and the exercise, and if you go to the exercise again, it's got a similar vibe to it, but a different, uh, different <laughs> kind of videos. And now, I think that's blackout. I would say I so. I would say that's blackout. We got yes. it right. We got it right. So you see, it's a very cool vibe, a very well thought out, lots of options here, uh, lots of ways to learn uh, phrasal verbs in English, and it's a great access to language that is fun, that is a, a just creative, and it's always fun to see apps that are well designed. And, and it's really, it's really timely well. for fall. Like that's yeah. a great thing to introduce for the fall because it'll align with the holidays that come mm -hmm. up and as the seasons change. And so I think on that, it, it's just it's so pretty. Yes. So today <laughs> on mobile learning in the classroom, we talked about language apps, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>